Hi, welcome to the Apostle Patty Valenzuela podcast. I'm Helen Maese, Apostle Patty hey Valenzuela. Um, so we want to welcome y'all. Uh, today we're going to talk about Genesis 16. Yes. And uh, it's the story of Abraham and Sarah and their servant Hagar. And they couldn't have the promised child. That's right. So then, you know, Sarah came up with the plan. <laughs> and um, Abraham impregnated his servant, his maidservant. And so uh, there's so many dimensions to this story. It's so, um, you can go anywhere. You can go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. um, and you can really illustrate any kind of problem in our life that we've either created or, or has been created yes. um, by a situation around us. But um, I want to focus on, um, on the dynamic between Hagar and uh, Sarah. That's very good. So, um, it's an interesting story because, you know, studying it, we always saw Ishmael from a really just, you know, just a bad standpoint. He's got a bad rap, poor guy. Um, you know, because he really is an innocent bystander in the sense that, you know, it was Sarah's idea. Yeah. And so the story goes on to say that uh, Hagar was just one of the most amazing servants. And the Bible says that she was so submissive to Sarah. Um, she was a good servant to Sarah. She treated Sarah very good. She was one of her best servants. But the Bible says that when Sarah has this idea, tells her husband, go and sleep with my servant, perhaps that's how God is going to give us this descendancy that he has promised. And the Bible says that without a thought, Abraham goes. And when um, when you see the story, you, 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 it's so interesting because you can really talk about, the Bible says that Hagar becomes pregnant. And now she thinks she's all that. And so she comes back to Sarah and she starts, she just starts to treat Sarah bad. Um, maybe she thought she had privileges. Maybe now she thinks, hey, I'm with child from your husband. And now she thinks maybe perhaps, you know, I'm entitled. And so she starts treating Sarah really bad. And the Bible says that Sarah had it. And so she inflicted um, Hagar and she runs, Hagar runs away. She's just like, peace out, I'm out of here, runs away. And that's when an angel of the Lord visits Hagar and says, why are you running from your, from your maidservant? You know, from your, from, from Sarah, you're the maidservant. you got to go back to Sarah. And, you know, Hagar says, well, because she's afflicting me, you know, I'm under affliction, I'm under persecution. And the angel of the Lord tells her, you're pregnant. You're pregnant with Ishmael. And, you know, God doesn't, he does speak negatively in a sense, because he says he's going to be a wild donkey, and that there will be people against him, he will be against people, but he also says that he will be a great nation, and that he will be a great, and he will be a blessing, and he technically was uh, a blessing, um, and the Bible says that God gives her that promise, she's pregnant, and then the angel says something so important, Helen, the angel says, go back to the place that you're afflicted. Because oftentimes we want to run wow. from that. We want to run from the affliction. Yeah. But he says, no, go back. Go back to that place and serve her well. Wow. And so, so oftentimes, I don't know if it's happened to you, you want to run from things that you've been afflicted from. You know, but, but, but the angel says to her, go back. Go back to the place, submit to her, and serve her well. And I think it's in that place that, you know, she becomes processed. In that place that I think that God wants to process us where it's in the places of affliction. God's doing something in our lives. God's testing us. God's pruning us. So when we've been talking about the desert, the desert is really not meant to destroy you. The desert is really meant to grow you, to expand you, and to really mature you. You know, it's there we're tested in the heart. It's there we're tested in character. A lot of people run away from that. A lot of people don't want that. They, they, don't, they don't want to be processed. They want God. They want the glory but they're not willing to go through a right. process. It takes a process to be able to be uh, tested, even in that, you know. We're going to be tested, Helen. We're going to be tested. Do you believe God? We're called believers. Are we going to believe God or are we not going to believe right. God? Yeah. And so I, I love how Hagar obeys. She probably went with a different disposition because, you know, of course, an angel showed up. If an angel showed up in your house, I'm sure, you know, things yeah. would really change your life. <laughs> And um, so she probably went back to Sarah in a different disposition. And she probably said, Sarah, I'm so sorry. You know, I submit to you. And uh, I'm going to serve you. And, you know, here's Ishmael. You know, so the Bible goes on to say that, you know, chapters later, of course, you know, we, we look at what happened in the story after the fact. She literally had to leave. 
to a desert. But in this story, you know, we, we see a lot of things. I see how Hagar met El Roi. You know, never again, never in the Bible do we find El Roi. And El Roi, uh, the Bible says, is the God that sees and the God that hears. And so even in our failures, mm, God good. sees us. Because even if Sarah failed, you know, and she just missed the plan of God. Yeah. God promised Abraham and Sarah that he, they were going to bear the promised child, Isaac. But Sarah got antsy, impatient, who doesn't? And even in that failure, and she had a second plan, I love how God's mercy is there. Yeah. And God shows up to Hagar and, you know, this mistress, if you will, this maidservant who is being rebellious, you know, he can't run from God. Yeah. God sees us, you know, and so I think if you're a prodigal out there, you've lost the fire of God, the presence of God, God yes. will find you. Yes. He's El Roi, and he finds you. He's the God that sees us, and he's the God that sees us and hears us. He hears our cry. That gives me so much confidence to walk life because he sees everything. Yeah. So even if there's false accusations against you, he's the God that sees. Mm -hmm. He's the God that will state your case. He's wow. the God that sees and hears you. You know, so I'm sure we've all been a product of, of, of a failure. I'm sure you've had failures. Oh, yes. I've had plenty of failures. <laughs> <laughs> and he's so merciful that he sees and his plan still stands. Like, if you think about God and all the failures that you've had, he just knows how to put you back on course. Yeah. He just knows, like, oh, you've been going in the wrong direction, daughter. Hey, you've been going in the wrong direction, son. You know, I like to say this, is that sometimes we think that we are advancing, you know, because we're, we're moving. You know, a lot of people that are maybe are hearing me, you think you're advancing because you're moving and you're moving and you're moving. But advancement can be, advancement means that you're going in the right direction. That, that's how it should be. But sometimes we're moving in the wrong direction. So Hagar was running in the wrong direction. And so she has to make a U-turn and go back to the place that she's afflicted, you know, even as a failure, even as somebody who failed, Sarah failed. But God had the whole story in, in his hands. Yeah. He knew what he was going to do all along. He, did. he would use Ishmael, but he would also use Isaac. Wow. And that was the promise. And so... I love God because there's people watching us, Helen, that have failed. Yes. They had another plan of God. Yeah. They detoured, you right. know, and now God is saying, turn around. Right. You know, get on track. Even if you failed, get on track, you know. And I love that because, um, yeah, we think of it as a failure yeah. for the, the whole, you know, Hagar and Ishmael, but God's love and mercy extends yeah. to that. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's he, he includes that in his, in his plan. He's... You're never outside of the love of God, no matter what you've done, you know, yeah. you never what you have been through. And your failure doesn't determine you, you know, but it's what you do with it that'll that'll determine what's gonna happen. And I love the God that sees me. Yes. And especially because of your failure, you know. And that's a powerful name. It is El Roy. El Roy. Yeah. The God that sees. El Roy, the God that sees and the God that hears. What confidence I can walk in life. Right. He sees me. Yeah. When you cry, he sees you. Yes. He hears you. When you're going through an affliction, he sees it. Yeah. See, the angel didn't say, yeah, run away from Sarah because, you know, she's afflicted you and poor you. No. Yes. He says, I'm the God that sees you. Hagar, I know what's going on. Hagar, I see your life. But that doesn't change my plan. You know, my plan still stands. Yes. But I will see to it that that plan is fulfilled. I'm the God that sees you. And I'm the God that hears you. We can rest assured tonight, tomorrow, for the rest of our lives, that when we pray, he's the God that hears. That's why I love what David wrote. And he wrote it in Psalm chapter 139. And he says a couple of things. One of the scriptures in the book of Psalm 139, he says, He saw my unformed body. Even before you were even, I mean, when you, were, when you had Hannah in your womb, God already saw her. He saw her little peanut. He saw her in your womb. He already saw her unformed body. I mean, think about that. When God, God sees wow. us in our mother's womb, our unformed bodies, we are a predestined people. That's powerful. Yeah. We can walk through life and we can know El Roe is with me. El Roe sees me. El Roe is hearing me. So when you pray, and then the Bible says that he hears the prayers of the righteous. So for one, we've got to be righteous, you know, because he doesn't hear everybody. He opposes the proud. So we got to get aligned to God, become righteous, obey him. 
and know that this is an amazing God. So I'm going to pray for people. I just want to pray real quick to, for people that maybe are walking in affliction. Maybe you're walking a failure out. Maybe you're like, man, I don't know how to fix this. Well, just surrender to God. Submit to God. Tell God you're sorry. And watch how God can turn things all All of it is going to be turned around for the good. That what the devil meant for destruction, he will actually use it for good. Amen. I want you to know something. That if you failed God, he's the God of second chances. The Bible says a good man falls seven times, but he will get back up again. He's the God of second chances. He's the God of third chances. You know, we got to learn, not repeat history. We got to learn from our mistakes. But he is the God that, that sees the mistake. He's telling you to turn around. Some of you are advancing and you're moving, but you're not in moving in the direction of God. So God's telling you turn around and get on the right track so that you can, you know, fulfill whatever it is that God needs you to fulfill in your yes. life. And so I know that there are people watching and you just feel afflicted or maybe you feel persecuted or maybe you feel, um, you know, oppressed. I feel like in, in this season, there's a lot of attacks in the body of Christ. Um, the enemy is hitting in different directions. Uh, the enemy is, you know, hitting you in different directions. And right, right where you're at, you know, we're just going to pray against uh, and intercept all those attacks of the enemy. And just like the angel told Hagar, uh, go back. Don't be scared. Yes. Uh, don't be afraid. God is with you. And I don't necessarily mean that in a physical. I, I mean that in the spiritual sense where let God work that affliction out. Let God work those things out. God will give you the instructions. God will give you the directions as long as you have a relationship and intimacy with him. God will give you the instructions. He's El Roy. So I'm going to call on El Roy, the God that sees and the God that hears you. And uh, we're going to pray in the name of Jesus that you get back on course. If you failed, you're going to get back on course. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare over people's lives right now that you are the God El Roy. You are hearing at the sound of my voice, you're hearing their cry. You are hearing their prayers. There are people that have felt alone. There are people that have felt very attacked, very afflicted, very persecuted, and you want to run away. But God is saying to you, do not run. Do not fear because you're not called to run. You don't have armor in the back of you. Mm -hmm. The Ephesians chapter 6, the armor of God covers your front side because you're not called to run. You're called to confront. And so I speak life into your life. Yes. I declare in Jesus' name that if you are facing failure right now, that all condemnation leaves yes. your life, that you will pick yourself back up and you will take all the broken pieces and that you will pick up and that you will build again. I declare in Jesus' name, all those that are listening and watching that have felt very attacked. I intercept the plans of the enemy over your yes. life. And I declare that that affliction is, is leading your life. I pray in Jesus' name that the grace of God is upon you. And I bind the work of darkness that is trying to take you out. I bind that attack in Jesus' name. Every attack from the pit of hell that came to stop you, yes. that came to derail you. Today we stop the assignment from hell. And we declare, we order that spirit that is coming to oppress you. That is telling you, you can't do it. That is telling you, this is enough. That there's nothing further. There's nothing past this. I bind that spirit intercepted in the name of Jesus and I declare that you are going to finish your race yes. you will finish your race and you will finish strong father I cover them with the precious blood of Jesus and I declare in Jesus name that you are an overcomer yes. you are more than a conqueror Amen. and that you will fight this battle and the victory is yours yes. in the name of Jesus we pray amen, amen and amen Thank you so much for watching us. We want to remind you of our women's conference. Please, please sign up September 6th and September 7th. Can't wait to see you guys. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for being with us. God is doing so much in our worship team. Yes. Get ready for some great things. We're recording. Um, we will be putting some new songs up on our YouTube channel, and you can use it for worship. Yes. We are incredibly seeing the glory of God in our services like never before. I've never experienced no. what we are experiencing now as a church and individually. Yeah. Corporately is incredible. This, the worship team is at another dimension. It is insane what's happening to you guys. It's so easy. Yeah. It's just coming out. You are, yeah. <laughs> yes. And you guys are just in the hands of God. It yeah. is incredible Amen. to see the power of God, the presence of God. It's just, oh gosh, it's so over you guys. And I'm really, really proud of you guys. So expect some YouTube yes. uh, songs to come out and you guys can, you know, worship to, yes. to their music. And I'll tell you, the glory of God's going to show up there. 
in your room. So thank you. Until next time, we will see you guys. Right. Blessings.